Willie Nelson, a legendary figure in country music, celebrated his 90th birthday in April 2023, a testament to his long and impactful career. However, beyond the public eye, fans were taken aback by the unveiling of the more tragic elements of his life story. Throughout his extensive career, Nelson didn't just navigate the highs and lows of the music world, he also faced a complex array of legal challenges. His life was notably affected by several legal issues, particularly related to the possession of illegal substances, highlighting some of the more tumultuous periods he endured. The journey begins in 1974 in Dallas, Texas, marking Nelson's first significant brush with the law over illegal substance possession. Then. In 1977, after concluding a tour with Hank Cochran, Nelson found himself in a predicament during a trip to the Bahamas. What started as an ordinary travel turned complex when customs officials found illegal substances hidden in a pair of Nelson's jeans, leading to his arrest and subsequent detention. Hank Cochran, not just a tour companion but a friend in need, managed the bail payment and even managed to deliver a six-pack of beer to Nelson while he was behind bars. Celebrating his freedom, an intoxicated Nelson attempted a leap of joy, only to fall and subsequently require medical attention in the emergency room. Although the judge eventually dismissed the charges against him, Nelson was prohibited from returning to the Bahamas. In 1994, Nelson's encounters with legal troubles persisted when a Texas Highway Patrol officer discovered illegal substances in his vehicle near Waco, Texas. The legal ramifications of this incident meant that Nelson had to forego attending the Grammy Awards that year. Another notable incident unfolded in 2006, as Nelson, along with his manager and sister Bobby, was en route to W. Richard's funeral. They were arrested in St. Martin Parish, Louisiana, for possession of illegal substances and hallucinogenic mushrooms. This arrest resulted in Nelson being placed on a six-month probationary period, adding another chapter to his history of legal entanglements related to substance possession. Sunchtosari, er Owen. On November 26, 2010, Willie Nelson was arrested in Sierra Blanca, Texas, after authorities found six ounces of illegal substances on his tour bus while he was traveling from Los Angeles to Texas. Following his arrest, Nelson posted a $2,500 bail and was subsequently released. The prosecuting attorney, Kit Bramlett, recommended against jail time, citing the small amount of the substance involved and instead suggested a fine of $100. In a light-hearted comment, Bramlett even proposed that Nelson could perform blue eyes crying in the rain for the court as part of his penalty. However, Judge Becky Dean Walker clarified that Willie Nelson was required to pay the fine and that performing the song was not a serious condition of his release, dispelling the prosecutor's playful suggestion. After discussions between Nelson's lawyer, Joe Turner, and the prosecutor, a settlement was reached where Nelson agreed to pay a $500 fine to avoid potential imprisonment of up to two years, along with a 30-day review period. Nonetheless, the judge ultimately dismissed this agreement, asserting that Nelson was receiving preferential treatment due to his celebrity status, especially since the offense typically carried a one-year jail sentence. Prosecutor Bramlett announced that the case would continue until it was either dismissed or the judge changed her decision. In 1990, Nelson faced a severe financial crisis when the Internal Revenue Service IRS, seized the majority of his assets, claiming he owed $32 million in back taxes. This financial strain was aggravated by poor investment decisions made in the early 1980s, following his split from manager Neil Reshin in 1978. Nelson was introduced to the accounting firm Price Waterhouse by Dallas Attorney Terry Bray, who recommended investing in tax shelters to help mitigate Nelson's debt to the IRS. Unfortunately, these investments did not pan out as hoped. Despite Nelson's significant income increase during the years 1980, 1981, and 1982, the IRS invalidated his tax deductions, leading to an escalating debt by the end of the decade, further exacerbated by penalties and interest. With the assistance of his attorney, Jay Goldberg, negotiations were undertaken, ultimately reducing the amount owed to six million dollars. Nelson's legal representative then negotiated a settlement with the IRS, which required Nelson to pay six million dollars. However, Nelson did not completely fulfill this agreement. To manage the remaining debt, Nelson adopted an innovative strategy by releasing the IRS tapes 
Who will buy my memories? A double album with all proceeds designated for the IRS. Additionally, Nelson's friends participated in auctions, buying his belongings, and then either donating them back or leasing them to him for minimal fees. Moreover, Nelson initiated legal action against Price Waterhouse, accusing them of directing his investments into illegal tax shelters. This lawsuit was eventually resolved with a settlement for an undisclosed sum, allowing Nelson to settle his debts by 1993. Willie Nelson's personal life includes four marriages and eight children. His first marriage was to Martha Matthews from 1952 to 1962, which resulted in three children, Lana, Susie, and Willie, Billy Hugh Jr., who sadly took his own life in 1991. This marriage was troubled, with Matthews inflicting multiple instances of violence on Nelson, including one incident where she sewed him into bedsheets and assaulted him with a broomstick. After ending his first marriage, Nelson married Shirley Colley in 1963. Their marriage ended in 1971, after Colley found a hospital bill from Houston for the birth of a child, Paula Carley Nelson, fathered by Nelson and Connie Kopke. In the same year, Nelson married Kopke, and they later welcomed a daughter, Amy Lee Nelson. Following his divorce in 1988, Amor in San, Willie Nelson found love once more with Annie D'Angelo, who became his wife in 1991. The couple has two sons together, Lucas Autry and Jacob Micah. In 2012, Nelson learned he had fathered another child, a daughter with his friend Mary Haney. Born on January 22, 1953, as Renee, but originally named Linda Renee Barley, she revealed her connection to Nelson by sharing a Father's Day photo with him in 2016. Sadly, she passed away in 2017. Nelson's living arrangements are varied and include Luck, Texas, a ranch in Spicewood, and a residence in Maui, Hawaii, where he is neighbors with several celebrities. A notable health scare occurred in 1988 when Nelson suffered a collapsed lung while swimming in Hawaii, leading to his hospitalization at Maui Memorial Hospital and forcing him to cancel an upcoming concert. To deal with recurrent lung congestion, Nelson developed a habit of temporarily quitting cigarette smoking during these periods, only to start again once the congestion cleared. At his heaviest, he smoked two to three packs of cigarettes a day. After several bouts with pneumonia, Nelson faced a critical choice between quitting illegal substances or tobacco. Choosing health, he gave up tobacco in 2008 and adopted a smoke-free method for consuming illegal substances using a carbon-free system to lessen the harmful effects of smoke. Nelson's health journey continued in 2004 with surgery for carpal tunnel syndrome, brought on by years of playing the guitar. Heeding his doctor's advice, Nelson canceled upcoming concerts and focused on songwriting as he recovered. In 2012, a fundraising event near Denver was cut short due to Nelson experiencing breathing difficulties related to the high altitude and emphysema. Though he was taken to a local hospital, his publicist assured fans of Nelson's well-being and his prompt return to the concert schedule, with the next stop in Dallas, Texas. Throughout his life, Willie Nelson has faced repeated challenges with pneumonia and empima, prompting him to turn to stem cell therapy in 2015 as a way to improve his lung health. These health struggles highlight Nelson's remarkable ability to adapt and persevere, allowing him to continue his legendary journey in music. From an early age, Nelson was drawn to martial arts, initially spurred by self-defense techniques showcased in Batman and Superman comic books. His serious pursuit of martial arts began in the 1960s after moving to Nashville, where he started training in Kung Fu. As the 1980s progressed, Nelson broadened his martial arts skills, exploring Taekwondo and eventually earning a second degree black belt in the discipline. The 1990s saw him adopt Gongkwan Yu Sul, a Korean martial art, in a significant event in Austin, Texas, in 2014, Grandmaster Sam Um awarded Nelson a fifth-degree black belt, recognizing his 20 years of martial arts commitment. A Time Magazine interview from the same year revealed Nelson's unique training regimen during his extensive tours. Utilizing his tour bus, affectionately known as the Honeysuckle Rose, as a makeshift dojo, Nelson would record his martial arts practice sessions and send the videos to his master for evaluation and guidance. 
demonstrating his innovative approach to staying engaged with martial arts in contemporary times. In March 2021, Willie Nelson's creative impact took a notable turn when his song, I'll Be Seeing You, was used in a public service announcement by the Ad Council to encourage COVID-19 vaccination efforts in the United States. Earlier, in January 2021, Nelson and his sister had received the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. However, in May 2022, Nelson encountered a health challenge when he tested positive for COVID-19, leading to the postponement of several performances. His wife revealed the seriousness of his condition, mentioning that his treatment included Paxlovid, monoclonal antibodies, and steroids. Demonstrating his characteristic resilience, Nelson returned to touring in September 2022, showing his determination to overcome health obstacles. Curious about Willie Nelson's early life, he was born on April 29, 1933, in Abbott, Texas, to parents Ira Doyle Nelson and Myrl Marie Greenhaw. An interesting detail about his birth is that Dr. F. D. Sims erroneously recorded his birth date as April 30th. Despite this minor mix-up, Willie's formative years were influenced by significant events and family connections. His cousin Mildred, who played a crucial role in naming him Willie Hugh, in memory of her recently deceased younger brother, underscored the deep, familial ties that run through Nelson's life. These connections even trace back to the American Revolutionary War, where Nelson discovered an ancestor, John Nelson, who served as a major. The Nelson family's migration from Arkansas to Texas in 1929, driven by employment opportunities, marked a new chapter in their lives. Willie's grandfather, William, worked as a blacksmith, and his father took up work as a mechanic. However, Willie's life saw a significant shift early on when his mother left shortly after his birth, and his father also moved away after remarrying. Raised by their musically inclined grandparents, who had previously taught singing in Arkansas, Willie and his sister Bobby were immersed in music from a young age. At six years old, Willie received his first guitar from his grandfather William, who also taught him the basics of playing. Together with Bobby, Willie began singing gospel songs in their local church, laying the foundation for his enduring journey in music. Willie Nelson's foray into songwriting began astonishingly early, at just seven years old, revealing a natural aptitude that would come to characterize his distinguished career. His engagement with music intensified by the age of nine, when he started playing the guitar for a local ensemble known as the Bohemian Polka. During the summers, Willie and his family joined other residents of Abbott in the arduous task of picking cotton, an activity Willie found particularly unenjoyable. Seeking an escape from the tedium of fieldwork, he started to leverage his musical skills for income, performing in dance halls, taverns, and honky-tonks by the tender age of 13. This early exposure to performing marked the onset of Willie Nelson's lasting rapport with his audience, a relationship that would flourish throughout his high school years and lay the groundwork for his legendary stature in country music. Willie Nelson's tenure at Abbott High School was distinguished by his engagement in a variety of activities, including sports, academics, and extracurricular pursuits. He demonstrated his athletic prowess by playing as a halfback on the football team, a guard on the basketball team, and a shortstop on the basketball team. Showcasing his wide-ranging athletic skills, off the field, Willie ventured into agriculture, raising pigs with the future farmers of America, indicating his broad spectrum of interest. Concurrently, his enthusiasm for music continued to grow. As a member of the Texans, a band established by his sister's husband, Bud Fletcher, Willie sang and played the guitar. The band gained popularity in Honky Tonks and secured a notable Sunday morning slot at KHBR in Hillsboro, Texas, further solidifying their musical acclaim and contributing to their expanding recognition. Show. Amidst his musical endeavors, Willie Nelson undertook a variety of job roles during and following his high school years, ranging from a temporary position as a telephone operator in Abbott to working as a tree trimmer for the local electric company and an employee at a pawn shop. Nelson's path in the early stages of his career was anything but ordinary. After graduating in 1950, he took a significant turn by enlisting in the U.S. Air Force. However, his military service was cut short after nine months due to back problems, leading to a medical discharge. Not letting this hinder his plans, he returned home in 1952 and married Martha Matthews. Between 1954 and 1956, he pursued studies in agriculture at Baylor University, where he became a member of the Tau Kappa Epsilon fraternity. 
Despite his academic efforts, Nelson chose to leave university to fully commit to his passion for music. Following his departure from academic life, Nelson held a diverse array of jobs, including roles as a nightclub bouncer, an auto parts salesman, a saddle maker, and again as a tree trimmer. His music career began to accelerate when he joined Johnny Bush's band, adding another layer to his developing musical path. The family's move to Pleasanton, Texas, led Nelson to seek a DJ position at COP, despite his lack of experience in radio. Dr. Ben Parker, the station's owner, saw Nelson's potential and offered him the position. This opportunity allowed Nelson to record his first two songs in 1955, The Storm Has Just Begun, and When I've Sung My Last Hillbilly Song. Although initially rejected by local label Sarg Records, Nelson's persistence and talent laid the groundwork for his eventual success. Nelson faced numerous challenges, including unsuccessful ventures in San Diego, before eventually relocating to Portland, Oregon, where his mother lived. The journey was fraught with difficulties, including sleeping in a ditch and hitchhiking on a freight train to Eugene. The generosity of a truck driver who gave him $10 for a bus ticket highlighted the resilience and determination that characterized Nelson's early endeavors and set the foundation for his rise to fame in the music industry. Employed by K-Van in Vancouver, Washington, Willie Nelson frequently showcased his emerging talent on a television program. In 1956, he made his first foray into the recording industry with the single No Place For Me, featuring Leon Payne's Lumberjack on the flip side. Despite the disappointment of the record's commercial failure, Nelson continued his efforts, juggling his duties as a radio announcer with performances in Vancouver's nightlife scene. His musical journey then took him to a nightclub in Colorado and later to Springfield, Missouri. After an unsuccessful attempt to join the Ozark Jubilee, Nelson found himself working as a dishwasher, a job that left him feeling unfulfilled. This led to a temporary withdrawal from music, with Nelson returning to Texas. After a short period in Waco, Nelson moved to Fort Worth, where he took a break from the music industry for about a year. During this hiatus, he explored different occupations, including selling Bibles and vacuum cleaners door to door, and eventually working as a sales manager for the Encyclopedia Americana. A pivotal moment in Nelson's career occurred following the birth of his son, Billy, in 1958, prompting the family's move to Houston, Texas. Along the way, Nelson attempted to sell his original compositions to Larry Butler, the singer of the house band at the Esquire Ballroom. Although Butler declined to buy the song Mr. Record Man for $10, he lent Nelson $50, offered him accommodation, and secured him a six-night performance at the club. While living in Pasadena, Texas, Nelson worked as a disc jockey at a local radio station and recorded two singles for Pappy Daly on D Records, Man with the Blues, The Storm Has Just Begun, and What a Way to Live, Misery Mansion. Nelson's career took another turn when he met guitar instructor Paul Buskirk, who employed him at his music school. Nelson sold his songs Family Bible and Nightlife to Buskirk, with Family Bible becoming a hit for Claude Gray in 1960. Driven by his ambitions, Nelson moved to Nashville in 1960, though he initially struggled to secure a record deal. Immersing himself in Nashville's music scene, he frequented Tootsie's Orchid Lounge, a bar close to the Grand Ole Opry. It was there that Nelson met Hank Cochran, a songwriter for Pamper Music, co-owned by Ray Price and Hal Smith. Impressed by Nelson's talent during a jam session, Cochran convinced Smith to allocate Cochran's recent $50 a week raise to Nelson, leading to his signing with Pamper Music. The turning point in Willie Nelson's early career came when Farron Young chose to record Nelson's Hello Walls after witnessing a performance of the song at Tootsie's. This was followed by another boost to his recognition when Ray Price recorded Nightlife, leading to Nelson joining Price's touring band as a bassist. This opportunity significantly shaped his musical direction. Through determination, flexibility, and a sequence of serendipitous meetings, Willie Nelson skillfully maneuvered through the music industry's challenges, laying the groundwork for the illustrious career that would unfold. In 1961, Willie Nelson signed with Liberty Records, marking the beginning of his recording career at the Quonset Hut Studio. By August of that year, Nelson achieved success with his first two singles as an artist, Willingly, a duet with Shirley Colley, who would become his second wife, and Touch Me. These tracks were Nelson's entry onto the charts, with Willingly reaching number 10 and Touch Me climbing to the number seven position, 
earning them the distinction of being his first top 10 hits. His debut album, And Then I Wrote, was released in September 1962, further solidifying his place in the music scene. Amid these professional milestones, Nelson's personal life also saw changes as he married Shirley Colley in Las Vegas in 1963. After marrying, Nelson briefly changed direction by working at the West Coast offices of Pampa Records in Pico Rivera, California. The demands of this position, however, encroached upon his time for music, prompting him to leave. Seeking a fresh start, Nelson bought a ranch in Ridgetop, Tennessee, near Nashville, in 1964. This move led to Fred Foster of Monument Records signing him, heralding a new phase in his career. Despite this promising development, only one single, I Never Cared For You, was released under the Monument label during Nelson's tenure there. By 1970, Nelson was poised for the next steps in his evolving musical journey. Willie Nelson encountered financial difficulties, as the majority of his income from songwriting was directed towards funding tours that did not yield significant returns. Alongside these professional obstacles, Nelson faced personal upheaval, notably his divorce from Shirley Colley. The challenges escalated when his ranch in Ridgetop, Tennessee was consumed by fire in December, an event Nelson interpreted as a catalyst for change. In response, he moved to a ranch near Bandera, Texas, and married Connie Kupke. Despite these tumultuous times, Nelson's single I'm a Memory managed to break into the top 30 in early 1971. As Nelson's contract with RCA was drawing to a close, he found himself in a precarious position. Following the recording of his final RCA single, Mountain Dew, alongside phases and stages, circles, cycles, and scenes, in late April 1972, RCA pressured him to renew his contract ahead of time. The underlying threat was that RCA might delay the release of his recent work if he refused. Disheartened by the tepid response to his albums, especially the disillusionment with Yesterday's Wine, Nelson, still under contract, chose to step back from the music industry, marking a dramatic pause in his celebrated career. In a twist of fate, in 2010, the evergreen country music legend Willie Nelson released Country Music, a compilation of classic standards produced by the talented T-Bone Burnett. This project was met with acclaim, securing the fourth position on Billboard's Top Country Albums chart and the 20th spot on the Billboard 200. The album's success continued as it was nominated for Best Americana Album at the prestigious 2011 Grammy Awards highlighting Nelson's lasting impact and dedication to musical artistry. In 2011, Nelson demonstrated his philanthropic side by participating in the Kokua for Japan concert, a fundraising initiative to aid victims of the catastrophic 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami, raising a significant $1.6 million for relief efforts. Nelson's journey took another promising turn in February 2012 when he signed a crucial deal with Legacy Recordings, signaling a new chapter in his enduring legacy. This extensive agreement covered the launch of new projects as well as a thoughtfully selected collection of previous works, enhanced with outtakes and extra content, all handpicked by the esteemed musician himself. A significant aspect of this partnership was the return of Buddy Cannon as the producer for Nelson's projects reigniting the productive collaboration that had yielded great results in the past. The careful preparation process saw Nelson and Cannon gathering material and fine-tuning the sound, with studio musicians laying down the tracks. Nelson then took part in separate sessions, adding his unique flair with his guitar. Cannon's role went beyond production. He also contributed to songwriting, with he and Nelson exchanging ideas and crafting lyrics via text messages. The first project to emerge from this revitalized partnership with Legacy Recordings was the highly praised album Heroes. This record, a showcase of Nelson's ongoing creative vitality, included collaborations with a diverse array of artists featuring his sons Lucas and Micah, the driving force behind the band Insects vs. Robots, and stars such as Ray Price, Merla Haggard, Snoop Dogg, Chris Christopherson, Jamie Johnson, Billy Joe Shaver, and Sheryl Crow. The album significantly impacted by securing the fourth spot on Billboard's Top Country Albums chart, affirming Nelson's enduring significance and charm in the music scene. In a continuation of his productive streak, Nelson's 2013 album To All The Girls celebrated his penchant for collaboration, featuring a series of duets with female artists exclusively. 
The album boasted a stellar cast, including Dolly Parton, Loretta Lynn, Roseanne Cash, Sheryl Crow, Mavis Staples, Nora Jones, Emmylou Harris, Carrie Underwood, and Miranda Lambert. Not only did this album debut at an impressive second place on Billboard's Top Country Albums chart, but it also represented Nelson's highest charting since his 1989 release, A Horse Called Music. This accomplishment added to his extraordinary tally of 46 top 10 albums on the country charts. Moreover, To All the Girls marked Nelson's second top 10 entry on the Billboard 200, making a significant debut at number 9. Willie Nelson's musical narrative progressed with the release of Band of Brothers in 2014, a pivotal album in his extensive career. It was notable for being the first collection since 1996's Spirit, to predominantly include songs written by Nelson himself. The album received an outstanding reception, climbing to the top of Billboard's Top Country Albums chart a peak Nelson hadn't reached since 1986's The Promised Land. Furthermore, Band of Brothers achieved the fifth position on the Billboard 200, representing Nelson's highest placement on this chart since 1982. Always On My Mind, featuring a remarkable duet with Rhonda Vincent titled Only Me, garnered significant attention in December 2014, securing the top position on Bluegrass Unlimited's National Airplay chart. In June 2015, Nelson's collaborative work with Merle Haggard, Django and Jimmy, extended his streak of chart-topping achievements by landing at number one on Billboard's Top Country Albums chart and achieving the seventh position on the Billboard 200. This collaboration underscored Nelson's lasting influence on the country music landscape. The release of God's Problem Child in 2017, an album predominantly filled with Nelson's own songs co-written with Buddy Cannon, further demonstrated his chart dominance. It debuted at number one on the Top Country Albums chart and reached the 10th spot on the Billboard 200, highlighting the enduring appeal of his music. In 2018, Nelson contributed his vocals to Cruel World, a track written by Daniel Lenoir for the soundtrack of the video game Red Dead Redemption 2. Despite encountering a delay due to a hurricane, Nelson's contribution was successfully included in the game along with an alternative version by Josh Holm, showcasing the resilience and adaptability of Nelson's musical legacy. That same year, Nelson was involved in Restoration, a cover album where various artists performed country versions of Elton John's hits. His rendition of Border Song added to the project's diverse and acclaimed reinterpretation of classic songs. The year 2019 saw the release of Nelson's Ride Me Back Home, which made it an impact by securing the second spot on the Billboard Top Country Albums chart, continuing the prolific artist's legacy of musical success. The title track from Nelson's album not only showcased his remarkable vocal talent, but also secured him the esteemed Grammy Award for Best Country Solo Performance, underscoring his lasting influence and exceptional contributions to the genre. This phase of Willie Nelson's career characterized by successful chart performances, varied collaborations, and Grammy accolades, solidifies his steadfast presence in the music world. Amid the US coronavirus pandemic lockdown starting in March 2020, Nelson took to live streaming a sequence of benefit concerts. The initial two concerts succeeded in raising 700,000 dollars to support individuals financially impacted by the downturn in the US economy. A third concert, held on April 20, Do I Get the 20, was a variety show that led common target for his albums, The Willie Nelson Family, Du Cato Du Acrier, and A Beautiful Time, Twin Women Too. Nelson garnered four nominations at the 65th Annual Grammy Awards, triumphing in two categories Best Country Solo Performance and Best Country Album. In December 2022, Mark Rothbaum announced the launch of a five part documentary titled Willie Nelson and Family which premiered at the Sundance Film Festival in 2023. That same year, Nelson celebrated his 90th birthday with two performances at the Hollywood Bowl and received the honor of being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Hey. What are your thoughts on Willie Nelson's multifaceted and sometimes challenging journey through life and music? Share your comments below. We hope you found this video informative. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. Thank you for watching, 
and we look forward to seeing you in future videos. Goodbye.